Night time. Day time. Night time. Day time. Night time. Day time. Wait, what about plants? Do plants know when to go to sleep? Do plants even sleep? Let's find out in today's episode of PB421. Firstly, we need to know how a plant even knows to do anything to keep itself alive. Like many organisms, it is made of cells, tiny microscopic building blocks. In each of those cells is a master blueprint called deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. This neat stuff has sections called genes that tell the cells how to stay alive. It's not unlike your parents when you're still growing up. They teach you how to function as a person. But without DNA, plant and animal cells wouldn't really know what to do with themselves and just stop working. And die. Dying is bad. DNA can do a bunch of different things, but let's focus on how plants know when it's time to go to sleep. DNA has a gene that helps make what's called a TOC1 protein. It will act as a regulator to either help or hinder the making of other proteins. At the end of the day, when there's little usable light for our plant friend, the TOC1 protein is gloriously maximized and at its highest amount. TOC1 is a positive regulator. It's going to bind directly to DNA and amplify other proteins production, namely LHY and CCA1. But TOC1's friends aren't quite ready to get our cell revved up and ready for the day. It's missing an important piece. Praise the sun! They need light! Light promotes the built-up LHY and CCA1 proteins to activate more daytime genes, so the plant can start waking up. At dawn, the amount of LHY and CCA1 are at their maximum. Now it can live its little plant life. Over the course of the day, however, all that LHY and CCA1 has been negatively regulating TOC1. That means that there's going to be fewer TOC1 proteins at the start of the day. But wait, remember what TOC1 does? It positively regulates LHY and CCA1 expression at night. With fewer TOC1 proteins in the morning, there will also be fewer and fewer LHY and CCA1 proteins being made throughout the day. Fewer of these proteins means that the daytime genes that they influence can't be used as well. On top of that, there's less light as the day goes by, so LHY and CCA1 can't be made as well either. Whoa, dude! That's a lot of information! In short, all of the daytime genes are slowly being turned off, just like how you do fewer daytime activities and get more and more tired throughout the day. Some plants even show you that they're going to sleep. With a low level of morning genes, TOC1 levels may rise again. At dusk, LHY and CCA1 are at their lowest levels, and TOC1 at its highest. Now TOC1 gets to do what it does best. Amplify LHY and CCA1 production to get the plant ready in the morning. This balancing act, or trade-off, between TOC1 and the morning genes creates a rhythm of waking and sleeping. We call this the circadian rhythm, or circadian clock. And just like clockwork, TOC1 and the morning genes increase and decrease each other, simulating... Nighttime! Daytime! Nighttime! Daytime! Nighttime! Daytime! So let's run through this process. When the day starts and there's a lot of light, a lot of LHY and CCA1 proteins are being made. Morning genes are activated by these two proteins and our plant friend is living its life. 
all the while, Talk 1 levels are decreasing. As night approaches, the amount of light dwindles. LHY and CCA1 levels are decreasing, allowing Talk 1 levels to increase. Talk 1 hops onto DNA and starts amplifying LHY and CCA1 genes. Once dawn arrives, LHY and CCA1 start production again, and the whole cycle starts over. So what's the purpose of a plant even going to sleep? As an alternative idea, why not just keep working? Well, plants need to make their own food, those are called autotrophs, and they need light to power those major functions. But what if the plant didn't care and just kept making food? It starts performing worse and worse. Making its own food requires energy, and sometimes it has to make something that it can't use, such as heat. Imagine doing nothing except making and eating sandwiches. All the while, your room just keeps getting hotter and hotter because you just don't stop and chill out. Days have passed and your situation is not looking up anytime soon. If your room wasn't a comfortable temperature, would you work better or worse? Obviously worse. Your originally great sandwiches just keep getting trashier if you don't take a break. For a plant, wasting energy like this means that it can't do well either. It's working outside of its optimal time, so its circadian rhythm is messed up. This means that it no longer has circadian resonance between its rhythm and the actual time of day. Ultimately, it will have poor vegetative growth and reproductive development, and that'll just make our ecosystem all goofy. Let's go over this one more time. Plants need to sleep too. By nightfall, there's a lot of talk one to make sure the morning can have a lot of LHY and CCA1. These two need the sun to wake our plant friend up. At dawn, there's a lot of LHY and CCA1, but very little talk one As the day goes by, talk one proteins get built up as LHY and CCA1 proteins get used up. Dusk arrives, and there's a lot of TOC1 and very little LHY and CCA1. This makes up the circadian clock. Plants use this to know when to rest and when they can do their best. Otherwise, they'll be too tired and goofy to work well. This concludes today's episode, but we'll leave this question for you. How does TOC1 affect morning proteins at night? As always, from everyone at the studio, have a great day.